What's up guys? Today for a re-review, we've got 2016's Hacksaw Ridge on 4K Blu-ray. For anyone new here, I won't be reviewing the movie itself, I'm just going to share a few thoughts on the video and the audio quality. Now let's go over a few tech specs. The movie was shot in 2.8K, it's got a 2K DI, it's rated R, runtime is 139 minutes, and the aspect ratio is 235 by 1 so there are black letterbox bars. Now before we get into it, if you're new to the channel and you're into home theater, then be sure to tap that subscribe button for new weekly videos. Now back when I first started the channel, I think this was the first solo review that I did by myself. And I don't think I gave it a rating, so I guess we're going to have to do that today. Plus, that video was kind of bad. Since then, I've upgraded my entire system, and this film still holds up fantastically today. The video quality regardless that it's got a 2K DI, is one clean and quite often 4K crispy. Detail here can be off the charts good. Sometimes I don't need to see the flies in someone's blown off leg or skin hanging off some guy's face, but it's crystal clear here. Besides the blood and guts clarity, you'll of course see all the facial features like pores and facial stubble and wrinkles and all that good stuff. The costumes also have that real textural, tangible appearance. You'll see the fibers and the dirt and grime in the soldiers' uniforms, and this also carries over to the background environments. Whether it takes place in town with the cleanly rendered houses and trees and cars, and even more so when it takes place on the battlefield. I noticed the smallest pebble on the ground, people impacted in the dirt, and rats chewing on dead bodies in the darkest scenes. So at no point in the movie are you going to have a lack of detail. Now with this increased clarity and resolution, some of the digital effects can appear a bit fake. There's a few backdrops that just look like the characters are in front of a green screen. It's not crazy jarring, but it can be noticeable. As for HDR, this takes it up a notch over the regular Blu-ray. The first half of the movie has a bright natural tone with saturated primary colors. So reds, blues, and that green grass is really pleasant on the eyes. Going into the wartime half of the movie, the color palette turns into various shades of blacks, grays, browns. A lot of earthy hues. The puffy smoke clouds in the background showed off how smooth the color gradations could be in this transfer over the standard Blu-ray. Specular highlights I didn't think were anything crazy, but there are some eye squinting moments with that flamethrower in chapter 10, and the explosions can pop pretty bright. As mentioned before, shadow detail is excellent, so you'll see things like the rats in the darkness or the occasional head sticking out of the dirt. I hadn't noticed any black crush or anything getting clipped. Gotcha! Stretcher! Audio is in Dolby Atmos, and it's one of the most aggressive mixes out there. Well, the second half anyways. If we're talking about height channel immersiveness, the top speakers are silent during the beginning, but really ramps up once we hit the hour 13 minute mark. Taking a look at the Atmos viewer, once those battleships start shooting, you can see how dynamically active this mix gets. There's bullets that move between side surround channels and between back channels, and debris and explosions move throughout the height speakers. Soldiers will creep up from behind and start shooting, and there's good weight from the gunshots and grenades when they go off in their specific channels. If you've got some smaller speakers, then you probably won't be able to hear the added bass from, let's say, the left back speaker, but if you've got some big ones, the extra bass response is pretty impressive. And what's even more impressive is the LFE. If you've got capable subwoofers, this Atmos mix might just blow a hole through your theater. Bass hits extremely hard and goes down below 20 hertz. So it's gonna rattle your house when those battleships start firing. Soundstage is wide and cinematic with a detailed musical score. As for dialogue, it was always easy to hear without any issues. So for audio, I'm gonna go with a 9.8. This has got straight demo worthy material written all over it. I think there's two big battle scenes that are a little over 10 minutes a piece in this. So there's plenty of stuff to show off how good your system is. High channels are aggressive, and the subwoofer is even more aggressive. I don't know what else to say about this, except pick it up. The audio is awesome. For video, I'm going to go with a 9.6. Hacksaw Ridge is one clean, crisp looking 4K movie. There's details for days, and the color palette is both cheerfully colorful and dirty and gritty. Just like the audio, it's awesome looking visually. Now if you like or don't like war films, Hacksaw Ridge is a must have if you want one of the best audio and video experiences that Ultra HD has to offer. So what are your thoughts on Hacksaw Ridge on 4K? Have you seen it and what would be your scores? Leave a comment and let us know. Now if you want to pick this disc up, I'll leave some links for it down below in the video's description. As always guys, thanks for watching. If you want, you can follow us on social media and if you want to get exclusive content and great deals on AV gear, then stop by our Patreon page. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys again in the next video.